All right, we're going to get going here. Um, I'm Greg. Me uh, welcome to 5AM Master Scrum. And today we have an interview today. And my name is Greg Mester. I'm a Scrum Master and Agile Coach, just like everybody else out there. And I'm gonna, we're going to be talking to Abzar Kareem. And he is an Agile Delivery Specialist. Uh, he's not... I would say he's not just an agile mindset kind of guy, but a, he's living agile. We're going to, as we interview him and talk about it, we're going to find more about not just the classic interview, but we're going to find more about him, have uh, Abazar uh, share different things about agile and what he's doing and where he's going and uh, things we can all learn from in the agile world. Well, welcome. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit of yourself. What do you like to do outside of the office? Yeah, definitely. And uh, before I start about myself, I'd like to take this moment and appreciate you for building up this uh, whole Agile community. And I really uh, believe it's, uh, it, it's a valuable platform for knowledge sharing and experience sharing. So so I really appreciate you for that, right? Uh, a little bit about myself. Um, uh, I've got uh, more than 10 years of experience in software engineering. Uh, started my career as a programmer, later on found my groove in digital transformation, Agile deliveries domains. Um, Outside work, um, I like cooking sometimes. I like spending time with my wife and kids. Um, like to learn and explore. Um, I'm a member of a few uh, like-minded people's uh, groups. Okay. Um, uh, I'm not too much of a sporty guy, but I do like some healthy activities like jogging. I uh, love my coffee. It has uh, some nuts and herbs in it, so it tastes great. Okay, good. I do too, and I, and we do now. You're on the morning side. I'm doing an evening side. You're in the morning on your side, because because you're in Malaysia right now. So is there a twelve hour difference from where I am here in Philadelphia and where you're at, right? Yeah. So, um, so let's talk about your experience as an agile delivery specialist, because I really like the title. You know, everybody's like, oh, you're an agile coach or whatever. I said, there's all kinds of titles out there and and things, and and you have an agile delivery specialist. What makes an Agile Delivery spe Specialist, and how did you get here? Yeah, so uh, I think if you get to, you, you're absolutely right that there can be many, many titles. And, uh, you know, I, I'm also one of those mindset that uh, doesn't really care about titles. But at the end of the day, when it comes about what kind of value are you delivering, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's how I summarize my value delivery as, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so Agile Delivery uh, and being an Agile Delivery Specialist, is as simple as leveraging agile practices to deliver results, right? Uh, and it's, it's as simple as understanding and embracing the, the value delivery mindset, right? Uh, so like I said, that I, when I started my career as a uh, software programmer, uh, I did realize that, uh, that I, I'm one of those uh, people who are uh, more and more uh, oriented and interested towards uh, the, the business advantages of uh, things, right? Uh, so, so very quickly, I kind of uh, uh, realized my group, uh, uh, and I went ahead and uh, tried to expand expand my knowledge in that area. Okay. So, I took a master's in project management, took a master certification, uh, uh, took a few other certification that kind of uh, complementing with my uh, experience made me what I am today, right? Uh, so, so I've got a uh, uh, lot of experience in uh, agile transformations in the public sector, in banking, telecommunication, transportation, and uh, of course, making mistakes uh, while I've been on it, learning from them. Mm -hmm. Until uh, I, I still am learning, right? But uh, I uh, can tell that I'm right now at a point where I can literally smell the the patterns or the anti patterns in agile practices and. Uh, uh, kind of guide the teams and companies through it. Okay, good. That's uh, that's great. I, I learned a lot on that one. Um, so one of the things I, I read on your LinkedIn, you know, I'm a little bit of chicken, and sometimes, you know, there are people here in Philadelphia that have never left the city of Philadelphia except for maybe go to the beach, and which is like an hour and a half drive. But other than that, they never left Philadelphia as a whole. But I'm looking at your profile, and you worked in the Middle East, the Far East. Um, you're from Pakistan, right? And yep. then, and then you, then you worked in uh, Dubai over at UAE, and now you're in Malaysia. Why did you feel the need to travel the world, and how did you get that to that point? 
Yeah, so again, I truly admire your attention to details out there. I really wish anyone seeing my profile uh, looks into uh, that, that much level of details as you did. So cheers to that. Okay, thanks. Uh, I believe uh, that's what life is about. It's about continuous exploration. It's about uh, continuous discovery, right? And, and it's my personal preference in life that, uh, you know, uh, by the end of my lifespan, uh, I don't want to look back and say, hey, I spent all my life living in this set of boundaries, right? I'd rather look back and say, hey, I explored the world. Uh, I met absolutely fantastic people around uh, the world, right? Uh, I experienced multiple cultures and uh, indeed playing my own uh, contribution in, in kind of pollinating great experiences from one country to the other, right? right? Uh, and, and, you know, when I, when I do imagine myself uh, uh, saying that, right, it, the feeling is so satisfactory and fulfilling that it keeps me moving. How, how did you did you did you have any fear about moving from where you grew up to external? Or you just said I'm going to do it, and you just did it. Oh yeah, absolutely. So look, it's all about uh, risk and reward, right? Uh, uh, so whenever I do make this kind of move, it uh, it brings all of those uh, uh, nervousness around, right? Especially moving with family, with kids mm -hmm. going to school is is not an easy thing, right? Um, so it's not just a physical move that you're performing, but it's also psychological uh, factors that, that come in and you have to deal with a lot of change management in your life. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I, I do believe in taking risks and uh, you know uh, making the fine balance of risks and reward. Uh, and so far I'm enjoying it. Good. Well, that's, you know, that's half the, half the battle, right? If we're not enjoying what we do and how we're getting there through our journey, it's like, what did I spend my, what, what's going on, right? And, and I think that, I think that's great. And I think it's great we get to share all your learnings from all these different countries and around the world and, and bring that here. That's, um, that's the idea. Yeah. So can you share us, we, you mentioned a little bit of anti practice, right? That you have commonly seen and prevents agile teams or any team, because I think sometimes the agile practice, the anti agile practice hit any kind of team, whether it be waterfall or agile, to deliver, you know, What's preventing them from delivering value to the customer? Have you seen any anti practices that really prevent them from delivering? Um, yeah, definitely. And I think there are many out there. Uh, but if I have to speak about one uh, major and common anti practice, uh, that will be uh, forgetting what the game is all about entirely, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people tend to uh, forget that. The game is about value delivery, right? Uh, and you do get uh, get to notice that right? when you walk into those kind of teams, right? Uh, people who are kind of trying and doing agile uh, while they do need a helping hand, right? Uh, you see the user stories also also looking like this. You know, as a user, I want X, Y, Z, and that's it, right? Right. The value of it is most of the times missing out there, right? Uh, so th that's how it begins, right? Uh, and that kind of makes, uh, you know, people holding on too tightly to their egos, right? And while I say this, there are many, many parameters to it, right? Uh, but I think I'll, I'll kind of uh, very generically speak about it. Uh, that, for example, technical people will stick to their technical egos. Mm -hmm. um, product people will stick to their uh, product egos, right? Even Scrum masters are going to stick to their Scrum egos. Yeah. Uh, and that's where I kind of walk in and start helping them and uh, kind of guide them on to what I call the art of letting go. Uh, the other day I was uh, coaching a startup on uh, on prioritizing their user stories, and uh, I, I think this is uh, the conversation that was around the same line that you know uh, when you have this idea of, of this product, right? Uh, it's it, you feel attached to it, right? It, it's your baby, right? And right. everything is more important, right? Uh, but the moment they understood the the uh, the whole concept of letting go and prioritizing, right? I think that was a moment worth celebrating because that was a beginning to to add to a you know value uh, uh, how we can say a, a value delivery stream, right? Uh, so so yeah, that, this is what is about, right? And even if you look into the Scrum guide, that's also saying that you know the Scrum is majority about the art of maximizing the amount of work not done. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um... Okay. The other day we 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 were at a chat because I you know we I always try when I do the interviews have a little conversation to find out what's going on and what what makes everybody tick and and bring that in and uh, you know the other day you mentioned three things that are key to delivery. 
Can you please share with us those three te- those three things, and why do you say it right? Why do you say those three are so key? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, my idea is that you know to manage successful uh, deliveries, right? You uh-huh. need to manage agility in PPT, right? Okay. Uh, not PPT as in PowerPoint, uh, <laughs> but what I call the three key aspects, which is people, processes, and technology, right? Uh, and it's in that same order, right? Uh, mostly Scrum masters or people uh, you know, taking responsibilities to deliver uh, are tend to be biased towards any one of these at a given point in time, okay. right? And that's where things do get kind of shaky, right? right. But once, once you do become a uh, due to these uh, this holistic system, right? That's where you get it, right? Uh, you you can't just make a process smooth and then your people part is struggling and your technology part is struggling, right? At the same time, you can't have the best of uh, the best technology in the world, right? Mm-hmm. While your people are not aligned, right? Or your people are not and no vice versa, right? So, uh, so to me, these three aspects are uh, kind of a reflection of a holistic system. Okay. Uh, and everyone uh, taking up a commitment to deliver have to three uh, see all of these three aspects. Okay. Very good. Um... Yeah, I, I totally agree with, with what you're saying about the, the people process and technology. And I usually work the people, work it into those other things, help the people out, right? People, and then those other things are like impl- uh, additional um, things that the people can use, right? Um, so I was reading your recommendations on LinkedIn, and I think it was Hassan, where he said something like, and this is what I liked about it. It says you inspired all the staff with fulfilling of good energy. My question, how did, how did you fulfill them with good energy? Because I really thought that I, I saw a couple that kind of said that. And I'm very curious of what did you do to make them energized? Well, I, I feel really good that someone read my recommendations part of the LinkedIn profile. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, and uh, so again, this connects to the previous question, right? That uh, uh, like I said, the people process technology and people mm-hmm. uh, part being the uh, first and foremost and the most important element. That's what I uh, strongly believe in. Right? Uh, uh, so what I do believe is that you know, uh, as a servant leader, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you are kind of that that servant leadership mindset, uh, you can't really uh, do it without. Uh, building a sort of a personal connection with your team, uh, right? Uh, mm-hmm. You need to uh, walk hand in hand with them. You need to show what's in it for them, right? Uh, you need to instill the purpose in, in those teams, right? And the moment you do it, right, you will see those teams do wonders, right? Uh, and that's that's all about, uh, you know, that's all what I do when I walk into the team, right? I really uh, kind of work and show them what they truly are, and that's about it. And they kind of they enjoy working with me for this very purpose. Uh, so, so while so this particular recommendation, right, uh, uh, is uh, connecting to this position that I was holding, uh, and while I was uh, uh, having an authoritative role uh, uh, within that organization, I choose not to leverage authority, right? I right. choose to uh, to uh, break all the barriers and all the the the, uh, the formal boundaries. Uh, and you know, literally get my hands dirty with the teams. Uh, I think if I have to sum it up uh, very precisely, uh, or a recommendation that I would give for for, for the viewers out there, okay. uh, it's this uh, book by Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yeah, uh, classic, that, right? Yeah, and uh, I believe that servant leaders uh, should be living up to to those points that uh, that uh, Dale Carnegie highlights. And if you get into the cracks of it, it's, it's all about being a gentleman, right? Uh, mm-hmm. It's about respect. About understanding, it's about appreciation. So I think that that really plays uh, uh, a part in in uh, uh, you know I wouldn't say people management. I would say in uh, in relationship building with people, and that's what uh, what you leverage to get things done in, in in today's world, right? Today's world is not a command and control world. Uh, today's market uh, is globally competitive, right? right. People have options, a lot of options, right? Yep. So, uh, that that's what what uh, I think should, is the way to kind of deal with people and right? give them respect and uh, trust them, and that's what the Scrum Guide says as well. Yeah, 
I'm just writing down that you mentioned Dale Carnegie. I'm writing down my notes. So that was interesting. We'll, yeah. we'll hit that one on the back on this, um, when you come back. Um, okay. So you got everybody all pumped up and they're all full of good energy. How do you, how do you personally keep your energy level up on those bad days of work? Cause like, you know, you can come in, life sucks, this, that, and I can't, you know, and this terrible. They're not doing my agile. No one's paying, you know, they're working waterfall. It's taking them six months and I'm trying to get them. So how do you get over that? Those, those, those days, right? Yeah, so I think <laughs> that's a very good question out there, right? Because uh, uh, these kind of suggestions are very, very uh, human and natural uh, circumstances that one finds himself in, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so team watching waterfall and not going agile is, uh, is not something that I, I, I'm really much bothered about because that becomes my job to kind of uh, guide the things on them. And I think I've spent enough time in my life to kind of uh, have uh, or build up patience in my character to... Uh, to look ahead instead of just, just that situation, right? Uh, and look, I take it this way, that you, uh, the, the uh, responsibility of my role uh, demands that I stay in my senses, right? Uh, so when, when you talk about agile coaching, right, mm -hmm. it's not just those coaching stances in the war room, right? right. It's also how you are practically demonstrating uh, the way you speak, the way you act, right? The way you respond to tricky situations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that also, uh, you know, uh, consciously or subconsciously, you are demonstrating the coaching uh, and people are still learning from you on the way you speak, the way you, uh, you act, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, that being said, right, uh, uh -huh. you can't avoid tough times, right? So uh, what I usually prefer to do is stick by this famous proverb that says, this too shall pass, right? right? And every time it does, uh, right? So uh, just a... Uh, an example is popping up in my mind uh, when, when you talk about a tricky situation uh, or tough situation. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's like almost a year and a half back, right? Uh, when I was in Dubai uh, and there was this new team that we were working to build up uh, mm -hmm. and it was the first sprint demo. Uh, uh, and, you know, uh, of course it was uh, a very uh, visionary kind of product that we, uh, the guys were working on, the stakeholders were very, very highly uh, involved in there, right? So that kind of built up a natural uh, pressure during the demo. And, you know, developers being developers until the last moment, until, you know, 10 minutes before the demo, they are fixing that small bug, that small refactoring, those small comments, right? Yeah. Uh, so a lot of pressure was in the air, right? Uh, and of course, uh, you know, while the teams were nervous, uh, somehow I was also nervous, right? But, you know, it, it's, what do I choose to, how do I choose to respond to that situation at that moment, right? Yeah. If I show my business, how's gonna impact my team? That's yeah. the question that I ask myself, right? So I walked to this developer, right? Uh, literally five minutes before the demo, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and he was ah, all pressured and, you know, uh, striking his keys and relaxed. Dude, what's, what's the worst that will happen, right? right? Stops. And he thinks, and he looks at me, smiles, and he says, thank you. We walk to the demo, and the next thing we see is he rocks the demo. Right. Good, you know, and I, I and I and I actually have done that to one of my colleagues before. They had everything backed up, and I just went to a question. You know, something was not working. I said, "Well, well, do you have this? Do you have that?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah." So, what are you worried about? You're good. And he's like, "Yeah." <laughs> I just I took him down from jumping off the cliff and and brought him back down. Or you know, yeah, we are good. Thanks. You know, just sometimes that's what the agile person needs to do. And I will say you gave me an idea and I, I will later on talk about, I like your idea of looking forward and where you want to be maybe like months from now first, right at that moment, that moment yeah, may right. be ca chaos, but if you have the vision and the agile mindset, we're going to get there. I'm not going to sweat this one little event. I got 20 more opportunities to make them to where I, where I think they can be or help them get where they can be. Yeah, and I think look, if you look into the agile values, right, uh, individual interactions over processes and tools and mm -hmm. uh, responding to you know, following the plan and so on and so, right, what you do see that those items on the left are the end, right, and the items on the right are the means, right, right. and what people uh, tend to make a mistake around is that they get uh, themselves a lot of pressure for, for, for the means and not the ends, right, yeah. if you keep your end in the vision, right, uh, your means can be flexible. Right. Okay. Um. Let's see what else. Like, I have doozy questions, right? Um. How has Agile 
um, helped a team in the past that you were proud of. So something like um, some of the recommendations, uh, recommendations said that you actually rescue. This is another one of the recommendations off your LinkedIn, by the way. And I love the term rescued their product, their projects, which is a great. It's like you can't paratrooper came down and rescued them. Um, and share what you saw and what did you do to help rescue this team? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and it's not very far back, right? It's just, uh, I think, six months back uh, when this happened. Uh, and uh, specifically about this uh, recommendation, uh, the, the project in question, this mm -hmm. recommendation, right? Uh, while this, this stuff is very common, right? Uh, you have been also in the industry, you uh, must also have seen a lot of uh, disastrous project which did start very well and you know all of the excitement and then you know fast forward two weeks uh, you see the team more hours going down product taking you know, all uh, together different dimension right, right? Uh, so uh, when I walked into this project right uh, it was around uh, so already midway in the in the timeline right okay. so it was I think a six month project and uh, I walked into this team uh, on the third month right uh, and, uh, you know, when I joined uh, this team, right, I walk into this uh, war room and uh, I was stunned because uh, the walls were full of sticky notes, right, Jira tickets all around. So I said to myself, well, this is a, a, a very mature agile team. They're killing it at Kanban. Uh, what do I have to do uh, to, to add value to the team, right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's see how that goes, right? So uh, comes the time for stand-up uh, and they did like almost an hour of stand-up meeting, right? Oh, I love uh, oh yeah, and uh, to my surprise, it was not just the stand-up meeting for the day, right? So they were having a stand-up meeting in the morning and a stand-up meeting in the evening and both around an hour and 40 minutes wow. uh, in July, right? Um, so, uh, and, and all of those stickies, when I got into the details of it, right? Uh, so those stickies were telling me a different story. When I look into the information system, Jira, that was, uh, that was telling me an entirely different story. Mm -hmm. When I go speak to the Scrum Masters and product owners, they were telling me a totally different story. And when I go speak to the teams, they were telling a totally different story, right? Right. So, and you know, when, when this basic housekeeping is, uh, is a disaster, right? Uh, the end product can't be any better. The same was the, the the picture for the product as well, right? The quality was suffering, the delivery was suffering, stakeholder expectations were suffering, right? Um, and what I did was literally tweaking some uh, uh, what I call quick wins, right? Very very quick wins, right? right. So just streamlining some some basic give, housekeeping. Give, give me one. Give me one quick win. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, the the most most basic one was. Uh, to reduce or eliminate the waste from the process, right? So why those two hours of meeting in a day, right? Uh, so I kind of streamlined that uh, that uh, involvement of the teams in the meeting, right? Okay. Uh, I did stand up the scrum way, the standard scrum way, right? Mm -hmm. So time bound, no specific questions, uh, coach the scrum masters to kind of how, how to not just facilitate, but also become a, a guardian to, to the meeting's pattern and all of it, okay. right? Uh, uh, but I, uh, it would be unfair if I say just just uh, correcting the stand up, correcting the whole thing, right? Right. Like right. I mentioned, the approach, right? Uh, so I I focus on all three of those dimensions, right? So some ceremonies was one of them, right? Uh, and and uh, you know, uh, building up the craftsman culture uh, in terms of technology, the engineering best practices, the ICD, and all of that stuff, right? Uh, and it did bring tangible outcomes, you know, within uh, within a couple of weeks, right? Uh, the, the the amount of stickies on the walls literally dropped down by seventy percent. Wow! Uh, yeah, uh, the velocity was was very much variating across sprints. Uh, so uh, by three weeks, uh, three months, uh, they had spent around six sprints, right? And the velocity of one sprint is going like twenty, and the other is going like sixty, and uh, the next sprint again is thirty. So uh, it was all chaotic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of worked to kind of standardize everything, right? You you really can't manage what you can't measure, right? right? So I seem to us a, a, a specific velocity, a standard. Uh, I made a team agreement on how do we define this three points as. Uh, and then when, when when we brought the stability in the story points, right? Then we uh, did the next step, which is to optimize for the three points, to, to uh, increase the, the uh, quality of our deliverable, right? So right. the team they enjoyed it, the stakeholder enjoyed it, right? At the end of the day, the, the product was, uh, well delivered, uh, 
uh, it was high quality. Client was happy, and the, uh, most importantly, the teams were happy. They were able to take those experiences to the next projects, and uh, those projects were were done much better in this company than the. Great. It sounds like it sounds like it was a real good uh, adventure, and you helped him out a lot. So that's awesome. Um, oh, yeah. By the way, it's easier said than done, right? So I really yeah. had to uh, to stand by my team's side, right? I had to spend eight nights with them uh, because that's that's what brings them up to that morale and that right. uh, motivation that one needs, right? You can't be a stay-at-home manager that you know I walk. Uh, walk out of the office at five o'clock while my team is suffering until 10 o'clock, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I agree. And then the quick, quickest thing is I'd be like, why are you here until 10 o'clock? <laughs> Let's get you not being here until 10 o'clock so we can all go home at a decent time. Yeah, I, that in software deliveries, you know, these, these times are sort of common, at least in, in, in this part of the world where, uh, where I have most of my exposure on, right? Yeah. Uh, as as closer you walk towards your deadline, right? Pressure starts building up. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens. Um, but the question I always has: Are you doing it every day? And if you're doing it every day, it tells me you're not doing it right. You know, because yeah, right. you're gonna so, stress out. Because you're gonna burn out. What's gonna happen once you deliver that? You're done. Your team is burnt. The next project, absolutely. right? So, so I, I'm a big proponent of this uh, uh, sustainable pace mindset, yeah. right? It's a lot of effort to to take your teams to there, right? It's it's, uh, it's a whole huge uh, mature level of agility that we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's possible and very much possible, and we have done that, right? Uh, but for people uh, not very agile or struggling with agile, mm -hmm. do struggle with those factors. So, so agile really solves that problem, right? Yeah. Uh, and of course, other frameworks like XP uh, from from Agile uh, also talk about sustainable pace and also talk about all those, those factors. So uh, yeah. I have seen those values and uh, those promises getting delivered, and I have actually delivered those promises. So, cool. uh, so yeah, you're right. Uh, sustainable pace is uh, is uh, a million dollar thing in, in software industry. I think. I think. What helps get that sustainable pace is, like you said, you got rid of all that sticky, all that extra clutter time that they're wasting, yeah. right? When I get rid of what I do is when I get rid of all that clutter, it frees their time up and I say, "Good, go home. <laughs> you're not Absolutely. you're not spinning around anymore trying to figure out what you're doing." You know, um, so cool. That, that was great, and and it was really cool that you were able to rescue them and just take surveillance of the area you might oh this is great and then you dig in and say oh my god it's not really that great <laughs> and then you figured out we got to work <laughs> on this um yeah. yeah sometimes the visual looks like oh yeah everything's great and then, then you dig a little bit deeper and you go yeah no they're not doing it it's like so many yeah. times i had companies that say oh yeah we're doing agile and you go you're not doing agile i don't know what you're doing <laughs> but it's your ain't agile well they told us it was agile so anyway so and you know in the beginning of this interview, right, I mentioned that you are not just of the Agile mindset, but you are living Agile. Could you please share what you think of when I when we say living Agile? What does that mean to you? Yeah, so that's the beauty of Agile, isn't it? That, you know, although it involved, uh, sorry, it evolved from uh, software development industry, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, if, if you get the grasp of the core values of Agile, right, mm -hmm. you can literally apply it anywhere, right? And I do it all the time. Agile is about focusing on people. It's about uh, flexibility to change, for example, right? Uh, so uh, I have counseled my friends in, in, in a chaotic situation in their lives, right? By applying some techniques, right? You know, a long-term backlog, a short-term backlog, prioritization, right? Uh, those things have been applied into uh, uh, into real life, right? And right. It's, um, uh, value delivery in real life, not just in software, uh, software delivery, right? Uh, so you know, uh, the, the kind of discipline that agile brings, right? Uh, I myself lean on Kanban all the time, for for example, for managing my daily routine, uh, or, or even uh, my career, for example, right? Uh, so, you know, like, like I just mentioned that, you know, uh, a lesson that you learn from Agile is that, you know, you don't focus a lot on me, but actually have your vision for the end, right? right. And that's what's important, right? Uh, and it, all it takes is, you know, a direction shift that, you know, instead of me spending all of my energy into uh, 
uh, into the means, right? Mm -hmm. I focus on the outcomes, right? Okay. Uh, and that's what is all about, right? That kind of leads back to what you were saying earlier about thinking long term and the outcomes that you're looking to gain and, and what we had talked about earlier. So, okay, great. Um, okay. So, continuous learning. You mentioned Dale Carnegie, right? So, you would read Dale Carnegie and I'm going there. So, we were chatting the other day and you mentioned that you're working on a book. So, now you're going to be part of that continuous learning world. And, and can you give us any teaser information about this book concept, what you're thinking, what do you, what do you, what do you think of bringing to the agile world and the continuous learning in the agile world? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, look, when you uh, put yourself onto a continuous learning drive, mm -hmm. right, uh, and you start reading and you start uh, uh, connecting with people in the industry, right, uh, it does naturally build you also up uh, to a level that you also want to share your experiences to the, to the world, right? Uh, so it connects the dots with the previous question uh, where I said uh, that, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, when, when I said that uh, I'm living agile, right? Which is I'm applying the agile uh, mindset into uh, my personal life and my friend's life, for example, right? Uh, so the idea of this book is uh, actually also out of one experiment that I did, right? So I took these agile practices and applied it into another industry that is very close to my heart. Uh, and uh, I saw very good outcomes in that one, right? Okay. Uh, so this book is coming out uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, hopefully. Uh, I'll be sending a free copy out to you as well. Okay. Uh, and we can uh, have another detailed conversation about you. So good. So when you when you get it out there, we'll do a whole, we'll do an interview on a book. So now to tell everybody out there who's writing books, if you want to do a show, we'll do an interview. We'll send me the book. We'll read it. We'll talk about it. We'll do a, a interview and talk about book and introduce it because I'm always happy to help other people out. I believe win win, right? I mean, everybody can benefit from each other. So awesome. That's great. So uh, now I'm going to say, tell us something that's not in your LinkedIn profile. Something that, that yeah, I got your resume. You know, you know, that's one of the questions. Got the resume, you got the resume. What is not in that resume that makes you who you are, right? That would make you stand out, right? That's a very interesting question, and uh, I think very interestingly, uh, all what we have spoken so far is not there in my LinkedIn resume right now. Uh, probably, I, I'm thinking right now to put this uh, video after it's out uh, onto my LinkedIn profile, so it, it really fills all those gaps uh, which are uh, there at the moment, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah, my experience lies there, my job title, my durations lie there, right? Some of my responsibilities and things lie there, right? Uh, but the fact that I'm writing a book, for example, the fact that I'm living it, I, the values that I believe in, uh, is of course uh, not mentioned. Uh, so uh, that's one part of it, right? I, I, that being said, you know, if I have to kind of specifically answer this question, I, I have to uh, share one thing that's not specifically mentioned in my profile and not a lot of people uh, maybe knowing about it. Okay. And I don't know if you will surprised after having these couple of uh, conversations with me, uh, is that uh, I've been an introvert personality type. I've been very shy and communicating, right? Uh, and you see many people with uh, with technical background with uh, that kind of uh, personality, right? But what I, what I did was work on really hard to cope up with, with the missing elements. And, uh, because, you know, uh, that introvert part of your personality becomes a barrier in you growing up as a leader, right? Uh, but I believe that you know uh, anything you you dedicate and commit yourself on, you can achieve that, right? Human being is a, is a very practical species, right? It can do wonders. Uh, anything that you can think of is possible. That's that's what I truly believe in, right? Uh, so yeah, I, I worked hard on it, and uh, you know I think this has also helped me, right? Because uh, being an introvert while trying to open up and communicate uh, openly with people, right? Uh, it makes me reach a fine balance of staying to the point in communication people like it, people appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, you know, I, it's really interesting to said that. I could say the same thing about myself many years ago. Sometimes you just, you just got to do it. And once you do it, it's like it's, it, it breaks that, that fear factor, right? And that helps you. The more you do it, just like Scrum and Agile. I always tell people, oh, yeah. the more times you do it, the easier it becomes, right? That's it. Sometimes you just got to jump <laughs> and do it. So, 
I think this is a great interview. I appreciate it. And it was really interesting the way you said at the end. And I'm looking at what we talked about. And I think it does paint a really good picture of different things that people can go away from, take away from, and, uh, you know, going out there and doing it. And I think your life has uh, shown that. I think you done, you're doing really well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, uh, it will be, uh, you know, the, the whole picture will be incomplete if I don't mention one very important element in there, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it it wasn't me all, all over uh, the, the my career journey, right? It wasn't me all alone, right? Uh, it was my seniors, my mentors, right? That kind of also helped me and guided me through this process, right? There are many, many names out there. Uh, but I think, you know, uh, for anyone uh, looking at this and, you know, uh, people having aspirations to grow in their career, grow up as leaders, right? Uh, we have covered pretty much a lot of things about Agile, right? But I must add this element if we have to conclude this, right? That okay. also do lead mentors, do look out for people who are expert in, uh, in industry and seek for help, right? Uh, people who have grown up to, to this uh, stages in their career, right? Are, are willing and are happy to help. Yeah. Yeah. No, and asking. Can- Ask them questions. The the good ones out there will reach out and, and and you'll quickly find out who's willing to do that too, right? I mean, the ones that aren't, you'll find right away they have, you know, they're all to themselves and just leave them alone. But there's a lot of people out there that are like yourself willing to help people. So, yeah. So I believe that you you only grow when you let people grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's a very agile way of thinking, by the way. Well, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to do this interview. I think it'll be great. I think a lot of people will benefit from this, and 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 we'll and I think it's it's a really good one. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed having this conversation with you. Oh, thank you so much, Greg. Uh, I think let's stay in touch. I'm open to help anyone out there. Uh, you know, uh, you're gonna put my LinkedIn profile. Oh yeah, I'll put a LinkedIn on the YouTube, and then LinkedIn and. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely link you up on that one. We'll see how what we can do well, over time. I'm very happy to add any value if I can for you. Okay. And everybody out there, connect to to connect to him so that you can have a link. He'll he'll, he'll accept you. So okay. All right. That's it. Thank you. And uh, 